What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at SoulCollector.com. Brendan, you look different this week. Yeah, I got tan and I turned Asian. So, <laughs> you, Brendan Dunn, is an amazing magician. <laughs> yeah, that's how good he is. He can shape shift. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's like Mephisto. So, yeah. uh, this is our newest episode of Full Size Run, the world's best Facebook live stream. Best YouTube show, best podcast, period, in any genre, any category. But of course, especially the sneaker category. Before we get into the show, do you remember you could catch us Wednesdays here, Facebook Live, 3 p.m. Eastern. Fridays, 5 p.m. Eastern. If you didn't catch the live stream, the replay will be available on Soul Collector's YouTube page. That's 5 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. And we are weekly on iTunes as well. So we are coming to you in every way, shape, or form possible. Uh, obviously, this is not Brendan Dunn, although... <laughs> I wish I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Gerald Flores. I am the uh, janitor-in-chief of... He's a big boss, man. <laughs> Don't let him lie to you. SoulCollector.com, filling in for B. Diddy, who was out on vacation this week. Hopefully, so. Brendan is watching us from some random mountain on the west, to, west coast mountainside <laughs> yeah, in or... his yoga outfit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still full size run as usual. We're talking news, we're talking best and worst, and we have a very special guest with us today who has a very, very, very rare special prototype Air Jordan 1, something that we have been instructed that it's so rare that we cannot even touch, which I respect fully. If Mans comes through and is like, yo, you can't even touch these, you know it's a very serious situation. So stay tuned to see those prototypes and also get some vintage MJ stories. Gerald, kick us off with the news section, please. Awesome. Well, uh, let's start with the uh, Tom Sachs Mars Yard Shoe 2.0. Which you're rocking. Yeah, rocking today. Fire, Went through, uh, fire flames. Nike Craft Space Camp last week, which was pretty dope. Um, so we talked about this on our unboxing last yep. week, yep. but uh, basically the first way you can get these shoes right now is to go through this uh, kind of like space camp obstacle course uh, here in New York on Governor's Island. Um, and uh, it's not as much of a physical ob obstacle course as it is kind of like walking through a uh, Tom Sachs art exhibit with like some physical things, uh, you know, sprinkled in and some like mental challenges as well. like tying like a bowline, bowline knot or, um, you know, like drawing a straight line, uh, which is like inspired from his uh, space camp. Drawing a straight line? Yeah, drawing That's a straight line. Hell. It is very, very hard. Um, <laughs> Did they give you a rule? No, it, well, it's, uh, I, I don't want to give away the secrets of space camp, but they oh, do not give secrets. you a rule. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, you go through this hour-long obstacle course and you have the privilege of handing over $200 to privilege. Nike. Um, I hand over $200 to Nike every week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm and, very privileged. And you don't have to do an obstacle course to do it. But for those who don't want to do that and who aren't in the New York area, uh, we got word that at least one retailer is going to be launching them globally yes. uh, early next month. Sivas, I can never pronounce this. Sivas Descalso. Yes. I believe. What Rich Mays Lopez said. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I believe there's a water uh, release coming online in yeah. mid-July as well. Yeah, so, so the, big, the big news here is that if you want your Tom Sachs joints, you don't have to draw a straight line for them in July. <laughs> you can walk into, walk into, I say that like very lightly because you can't walk into nothing nowadays in cop sneakers, but you can get a pair, hypothetically speaking, outside of the space camp. Sivas Descalso um, went live saying 7-7, I believe, was the release date. Uh, Tom Sachs himself says 7-13. What the release date is or will end up being, we don't exactly know yet, but we do know wider release in July of the Tom Sachs 2.0 uh, Mars Yard sneaker. I did not go through the space camp thing, although looking at them now, I kind of wish I did. They are fire. Hopefully during the, uh, during the wider release, I can get a pair because they are dope. Yeah, I've been wearing these every day since like Saturday. Which you're supposed uh, to do. Tom, yes. Sachs, Tom <laughs> Sachs explicitly said, and if you missed our unboxing, shame when you go back into our videos, it says something along the lines of like, posers need not apply when copying these sneakers. He wants you to rock them. So Gerald is really not posing out here. Yeah. Are they comfortable? Yeah, they're pretty good. They're kind of like, uh, they have the sole of the um, SFB boot. Yeah. Um, so it's like really much like built for like urban terrain. Yeah. Uh, if, if like we needed a special sneaker to walk on concrete anyway, uh, but uh, 
But uh, yeah, man. Like and like, I mean, um, I like old man style, and they're kind of like old man shoes. Oh, you came through so. with, your, with, your, with your dad swag today. <laughs> yeah, I think that's dope. My swishy pants, just in time for Father's Day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, happy Father's Day, by the way, uh, to all the fathers out there. Uh, salute to everyone. Treat yourself this weekend. Cop yourself some Tom Sachs <laughs> Mars Yard joints. Yeah. That leads us to another collaboration of the completely different side. DJ Khaled officially unveiled his We The Best pack this week. The pack has an Air Jordan 3, obviously, which has shut mm -hmm. down the net. Uh, a Fly 89 and a Team Jordan as well. Uh, in order to get your hands on the We The Best Air Jordan 3, you have to pre-order his Grateful album that's coming out on June 23rd. I'm not really so sure. They haven't been, at least that I've seen, so maybe, Gerald, you know more than I do because you are the DJ Khaled plug. Uh, they haven't been so forthcoming with exactly how you get the sneakers or how that's go going, at least that I've seen. But in order to try to attempt to get the sneakers, you have to pre-order the album, which, again, is dropping on the 23rd. Uh, I think... The, the, the biggest takeaway that I have from this is, and a couple people have mentioned it online too, is I completely understand why DJ Khaled is getting his own sneaker and he should be getting his own sneaker. He is a social media kingpin. He is a me music mogul, producer kingpin as well. But I guess what some people have pointed out and which I, what I was thinking as well is that Khaled is getting an official Air Jordan collaboration before Fat Joe does, Nick right? Nick Cannon, too. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. If you watched uh, Sneaker Closets this, this week, the first uh, episode, Joe went into Nick Cannon's sneaker closet, and he officially unveiled for the first time his Wild and Out Air Jordan 7, which he said is dropping, too. So both Nick Cannon and DJ Khaled are getting collaborations before Fat Joe. And the reason I mentioned Fat Joe is was Fat Joe is one of the most respected and widely known OG sneaker collectors. He's had his own TS Air Jordans, mm -hmm. but nothing that hit retail. Again, that's nothing taken mm -hmm. away from Nick Cannon or DJ Khaled. They both deserve uh, collaborations, but I guess I'm wondering, where's Fat Joe's? Mm -hmm. Also, your thoughts, Gerald, on the We The Best Air Jordan 3? A uh, couple things. I yeah. uh, actually got a quote on the Khaled 3s from Genesis Qu Quellar. Okay. They fire. F-I-Y-A. Fire! <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, I don't think it would be a surprise. It did not surprise me at all that he was uh, he was getting one. Oh, yeah. Um, like the throwback to those, uh, you know, Chicago Bulls colors. Because yes. that's something you kind of rarely see on uh, Air Jordan collabs nowadays. Absolutely. Or just... Kind of air, like flagship Air Jordans in general. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing I think we, we just covered today, SoulCollector.com. It's a very good sneaker website. If you, you should haven't go there. Checked it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should you should definitely check it out. But uh, there is a typo on a few of them, or I don't know if it's on purpose or or not. But Grateful spelled G R E A T, which uh, Cali kind of owned up to and said these are going to be the limited edition pairs okay. that. Uh, some people will get it, will be getting so you can say it's like a limited edition typo um so if you're lucky i wonder if those will flip for anything more um now we but, got the ty typo yeah. gate <laughs> typo like gate, is yeah. yours the, with the typo because not i'm not giving you the extra bread uh in my personal opinion i agree with g yeah. it's a it's a good at least Khaled didn't do some wild like purple joint right like at least he mm -hmm. kept it close to the og colorways as red black with the cement i really like that Jordan let him put the We The Best logo on the heel. Yeah. In the past, Jordan would have never let anyone kind of mess with the branding. We recently saw it with the Cause release where it has the XX and Air under it. Mm -hmm. And the We The Best logo on the heel is actually really dope. Uh, the way they married the pre-order with the release is really dope. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Khaled for getting uh, his, his dream come true, basically. Yeah. Gerald and I went to Miami like probably a year ago. It's been a yeah. minute. And we interviewed DJ Khaled uh, for Facebook Live. And in that interview, we actually broke the news that he would be dropping these J's. It was almost a year yeah. ago. I forgot about that. Yeah. I, was, I was there. That was a minute yeah. ago. You <laughs> so, were behind the camera. That, yeah. That's why so, it didn't surprise me. Yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. This has been in the works in a minute. And in the interview, he was like, oh, man, I'm just putting it out there. Hopefully it might happen. So obviously yeah. he put it out there and it did happen. Shout out to Khaled. Uh, I first met Khaled probably like 15 years ago 
when he was just on the come up. And I will tell you, before Khaled became the DJ Khaled you know today, he was the same DJ Khaled back then. He was still trying, he was still wild and, and loud and full of energy. And, but the difference was nobody was listening to him back then. But he believed in himself and he kept that same attitude to today and now on top of the world. So have shout you, out to Khaled. Uh, have you read The Keys? His I have not read book. The Have you read The Keys? Uh, I have. It was, okay. uh, it, was, um, it was a pretty fun read, actually. I and mean, there was some like, good life advice in there. I think one of my favorite lines, which uh, always sticks out to me, if you're not familiar with The Keys, it's a motivational book, book yeah. written by DJ Khaled. Uh, and uh, there's this one line I was reading on an airplane, and I just laughed out loud because it was it, one of the quotes was, you got to think future to be future. Just ask my friend future. And I just remember like reading that line, like uh, <laughs> in the airplane, out just laughing out loud. But uh, so in your bookcase, is it like Art of War, the keys? <laughs> oh, yeah. The well, Bible. The, yeah, the, yeah, definitely. The Bible's in the middle there somewhere <laughs> okay. for sure. Um, but one last thing on the Khaled thing. Yeah. Uh, Hero Dang uh, dropping in in our comments saying, I'll take a pair of LeVar balls over the threes. What's your, what's your take on that? Wow. Listen, that just you, just, you just like shocked me there. Would I take some Zo 2s over the Jordan 3s? I'm going to have to say no because I'm going to keep it true to myself. And, you know, I'm a Jordan head and Jordan 3 is one of the best all time. But listen, I do want some Zo 2s. <laughs> Every damn episode that we do of this show, I'm going to say... Please send me Zo Tubes and LeVar Ball. I know you're watching. This is the 10th episode that I know you've watched. We need you on episode 11. Please come mm -hmm. through LeVar Ball. Actually, you know what? LeVar Ball is going to be in town for the draft. So, LeVar Ball, when you're in New York next time and you're watching my New York Knicks draft <laughs> your son, <laughs> come through to Full Size Run. We have questions. Shout out to the Knicks. Shout out to the Knicks. Yeah. If no one else is going to shout them out, we will. <laughs> yeah. G, uh, zebras are coming back. Yes, they are. June twenty fourth. Yep. Uh, and uh, big news about this time is about this this go around is it looks like they're going to be a lot more widely available. Very. Uh, you know, not just online. Uh, Adidas released their store list yesterday. Uh, we've also confirmed that other boutiques are going to be getting them. Big box retailers like uh, Foot Locker, Champs are going to be getting them. Yep. Um, so uh, my big question is, I mean, I, I, I missed out on the first time, so I'm actually looking forward for them to come Me back. Too. But Me too. if you've been holding on to a pair to resell, what is your, what's your end game now? Do you, do you flip right away or, or what's your take? I feel like Adidas is definitely, not, not like they should care at all, but definitely messing up the Yeezy flip game, period. They first did it. Uh, a couple weeks back on Full Size when we discussed it with the Calabasas joint, those sneakers went from 900 to 250 in a couple of hours on the resale market. The Zebras were the highest resale value Yeezy uh, V2. Mm -hmm. And going for a crazy amount of money because when they first dropped, they were super limited. Now they're basically going to be the equivalent of a Yeezy GR. Like, yeah. there's no resale anymore for, for these sneakers that are restocking. Adidas is either purposefully or willfully or not even caring, killing Yeezy resale. Again, Brendan mentions it every time that we're on the show, and I agree with him. This does go back to Kanye, Kanye's bold proclamation that everyone on earth you know, will have their chance at getting Yeezy. So Adidas and Kanye are holding true to their promise, but sneakerheads don't want to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here's my take. Um, I was talking to Josh Luber of uh, StockX um, about this last week, and... You know, I think one thing that needs to be seen is like I think they treat like that Calabasas shoe yeah. and this Yeezy 350 V2 kind of in different categories. I yeah. mean, I think he kind of expected that resale uh, to drop because it was already like a price point shoe. It's like the Calabasas shoe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, you, um, Adidas isn't going to tell us the numbers of how many they made, but uh, if I had to like take a wild guess, they probably made a bunch more of those than they did um, the boost joints. Yeah, yeah. The boost joints. So uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe we'll see like a, a big fluctuation, or maybe not in resale. But I mean, I don't resale, so if that's your thing, sorry. Useful information. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm with you. I missed out the first time around. I'm excited to come, to see these come back. I think that this is the best V2 colorway in my personal opinion. Uh, so me too. I'm I'm happy to see them back. I'm actually mad at myself because I should have rocked the Calabasas joints today. <laughs> that's a good sneaker. If you guys don't have it, I don't give a damn what resale is. That Yeezy Calabasas joint is a very good sneaker. So from Yeezy to more Yeezy, earlier this week, 
a picture of the Yeezy slides or the Adidas Adelette by Kanye West, we're calling them Yeezy slides, <laughs> yeah. uh, leaked onto the net by way of Jazzy, who's a friend of the program over here. Uh, <laughs> I was I was like I was I was I was on Twitter when this leaked and I was extremely perplexed, let's say. Shocked. That's the Jazzy's calves in that photo. She's been working out. <laughs> she don't she don't miss leg day. Yeah. So I was perplexed and shocked at how this pair of slippers took the internet by storm. Like she just posted one picture of these slides and everyone and their mother went crazy for a slipper that says Yeezy on it. You can walk into Famous Footwear, trust me because I have, and <laughs> cop a pair of Adelettes right now for like 15 bills, okay? <laughs> as much as I love Yeezy, and I do, and his stuff, like the internet went crazy for Yeezy slippers and I just can't call it. <laughs> Gerald, like, are you going crazy for Yeezy slippers? Uh, no, man. I mean, I don't really usually rock slides on the regular, but uh, from what I'm told, these are uh, friends and family pairs, so okay. they might not even make it to retail. But, uh, you know, if they did, I wonder if, like, you know, we saw that same thing with the Puma uh, Fenty slides. Yeah, those uh, flew. You know, those are going, and how, I don't even know how many people were, were, I mean, how much people were buying them for. Yeah. But, uh, man, how, what, do you, what, would, what retail price would you estimate Adidas X Yeezy to put I would on say it. that these are probably pushing a buck. I would say 100 to 120. Because I think the, the Rihanna joints were like 80, if I remember correctly. Uh, mm -hmm. A regular pair of Adelettes will cost you 40 if you're buying them at retail. So I'm thinking at least twice that. So like 80 to 120 for some Yeezy slides. Like, listen, slides can get expensive. If you want to rock your Gucci flip flops and do whatever you want in them, you got to know that they are expensive. So I could see Yeezy Slides going for, for a grip. Let us know if you guys are interested in Yeezy Slides. Again, I'm just more shocked at how a pair of chancletas just took <laughs> the sneaker world by storm. So that was crazy. Yeah. From Yeezy, Gerald, to Jordan. Michael, Air Jordan. Uh, this week we got to look at the uh, convert. So we get, we're getting two Jordan packs this month, if this date is correct. But yes. we're looking at the uh, Converse uh, X... Um, Michael Jordan, I keep saying Michael Jordan, but Air Jordan 2 pack yep. uh, celebrating the, um, well, uh, MJ's roots at yep. the University of North Carolina yep. and the 1987 uh, UNC alumni game, which yep. I believe is a date that is on the back of that too. Um, I think the timing is kind of cool because the projected release date for this is June 28th, which would be 30 years to the day. Uh, oh, of, of that day. Yeah, of, of that, that game. game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, I know we have these internal conversations between you, me, and B. Diddy mm -hmm. and, and on our Slack channel mm -hmm. um, about uh, these sort of like Jordan brand digging into the roots of, yes. you, to bring these stories out. And yes. uh, this is a good one that hasn't been uh, told yet. This and uh, I think they did it justice and the timing was right with uh, UNC coming off that state, uh, that uh, national, national championship. Yeah. And the draft uh, coming up. And the draft coming up. Yeah, yeah I'm a fan of these. I'm a fan of them too. I, you know, years back, if you were in the game years back, the original DMP was rumored to have a Converse Pro Leather in it, which at the time would have been a little bit more insane than this because Nike didn't even own Converse at, the, at that time so many years ago. But Nike does own Converse now, so that is a, a, a little bit less controversial. But I agree with uh, Gerald that this is, this is very good. And this is an amazing way to marry the heritage of both brands together. Uh, bringing Converse's heritage with Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan did rock Converse uh, with the Air Jordan 2, which obviously he rocked and at that alumni game. Uh, you know, we've heard, and maybe our, our guest today can speak on it too, uh, historical perspective on the, on the Air Jordan. We've heard that Michael Jordan was on the verge of going to Adidas before signing his or re-signing his contract when the Air Jordan 3 came out. He rocked Adidas, he rocked Converse prior uh, to joining Nike. Uh, before joining Nike, the word was that he really didn't care even so much about Nike. He just wanted to rock what he had been rocking and you know wasn't so caught up in it the way we are today. Uh, so Jordan going back and, and tapping into that Converse heritage for, for Michael is, is really dope. And we talk about this all the time, as Gerald said, uh, amongst the team. 
Some of these things that Jordan does to tap back into the history of Michael Jordan are a little bit of a stretch. Late show ones. Yes. Give you an example. Yeah, a that was kind of random to a me. A little yeah. bit of a stretch. The sneakers themselves might be fire, but the stories might be fantastic, man. <laughs> but at the same time, these are dope. Yeah. I completely agree with Gerald. I'm looking forward uh, to them myself. So, we got a couple people too weighing in on the comments. We got Victor S. Uh, Saying, you know, I can't, I'm sorry I can't rock Jordan 2s. They always have my, uh, always looked ugly to me. It's a good sneaker. Yeah, I mean, to each his own. Uh, don't tell that to Russ Benson, who yes. the Jordan 2 is, is his, his favorite, favorite yeah. uh, Air Jordan. Uh, also got Tristan Thomas. Uh, I'm excited about this pack more than I was the DMP that dropped. Yeah. Early history of Jordan is phenomenal, which is very true because you can't manufacture that stuff like no. you just alluded, alluded to. Yes, and if you're interested in early Jordan history, we got a banger of a guest on deck for you. <laughs> Speaking of Jordan 2, very quickly, Just Don Air Jordan 2s are dropping in men's sizes this Friday. Just wanted to update you yep. guys on that. From Jordan to more Jordan. This is a little exclusive Ooh. that... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That Soul Collector will be fully unveiling tomorrow. Uh, that is Thursday the 15th. Mm. Spike Lee and Jordan are collaborating once again, and they are dropping the sneaker exclusively this Friday at 40 Acres and a Mule, which is uh, Spike Lee's headquarters here in Brooklyn. I can't, we, we know all the details, but we're not gonna scoop ourselves here. Uh, I can't divulge Everything that is is going into this release as a matter of fact, I'm getting texts throughout the day uh, As the as the release progresses it started off as a sneaker, but now it's going to be a pack I can't tell you what's going to be in the pack, but it's going to be a pack uh, Again this Friday at 40 acres in the mule. It's an Air Jordan retro What the retro is I'm not going to tell you either you'll see soon. It's not a Spizike. It's not uh, a Mars It is a retro sneaker the other thing that I can tell you is that there will be somewhere in the vicinity of 30 total mm -hmm. pairs made. You heard it here first. Which means mm -hmm. that this is by far the most limited Air Jordan r retail release that I've ever heard of. It might, listen, by the time Spike gets his requests in, that 30 might be 15 real quick. So uh, just know, to, if you're in New York, if you have plans to come into New York, or if you want to get on a plane right now, uh, you need to be here by Friday morning, 40 acres in the mule. Uh, Gerald, obviously, you've seen the sneaker, and I don't want to, you know, uh, give too much info, but your thoughts on this? On the package or the, or the shoe? The oh. shoe, and everything. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's dope. One, I love things that are kind of unexpected. Yes. Makes things more democratized. Yes. Um, can we say that it's related to Father's Day? Well, we just did. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's related to Father's Day. So I think uh, that kind of ties in pretty, uh, pretty nicely together. And, you know, Spike Lee, he's, uh, there's a few people who have kind of grown up uh, career-wise and have, yes. um, you know, uh, history or a strong connection to Jordan brand like Spike Lee. So yes. I think this is, it's pretty awesome. And Spike, you're welcome to come on full size run. Anytime. Anytime you're in town. So tomorrow again, we will have the full details on the release. We also have an exclusive interview with the man himself, Spike Lee going up. The interview is a banger. He has some <laughs> Michael Jordan anecdotes in there that you're going to want to uh, check in for. Uh, remember, Last month, Jordan did the uh, Do the Right Thing collaboration with The Four. This is not, and that was only seated to select people. This is a retail release. You will be theoretically able to cop. It's going to be a zoo out there on Friday. Be safe, and all the info will be tomorrow on soulcollector.com, which, again, is a good website. You should probably check it out. <laughs> yes. uh, that takes us to our best and worst section. So each week, we live on the internet and we pick the best and worst things that we've seen on the internet. This, my best is like maybe the five time reigning champ of best. Of course, it is a LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball related story. So Foot Locker earlier today uh, unveiled a commercial for Father's Day, right? In the commercial, several of the uh, upcoming draft picks are speaking about the amazing contributions that their fathers have made in their career, right? 
I believe Marco Fultz is in it, uh, DeAndre Jackson is in it, I believe, and of course, Lonzo Ball. So the, you should check out the commercials on YouTube. So uh, it starts out very seriously with the, <laughs> with the draft picks talking about how amazing their fathers have been in their, in their career. And then Lonzo, <laughs> then Lonzo Ball comes on and talks about how his father yelled at his <laughs> high school coach in front of a whole gym because he didn't get enough touches. And then he told 29 out of the 30 teams to not draft him. And basically all the wild stuff that uh, LeVar Ball has <laughs> done uh, to his son uh, recently, which you should all know by now. And the reason why this is genius is, is several reasons. First is because the, 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 black, the, the difference between these guys talking about their fathers taking them fishing and Lonzo Ball talking about his father yelling at his coach in, uh, in a packed gymnasium is just amazing. Second, this is the first time that we've actually heard Lonzo Ball address his father's outlandish accent, uh, actions, period. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's alluded to it like, oh, I support my father. He's taken me this far, so I'm not going to say anything. But this one, he actually like talks about each thing that his father has done. It's tongue-in-cheek, tongue mm -hmm. and it's hilarious, and it's easily the best thing I've seen on the internet in, in a quite a long time, probably since the uh, LeVar Ball, Lonzo Ball, yeah. Ball family sneaker shopping. Amazing. You should check Lonzo Ball's, I mean, uh, LeVar Ball's Twitter right now. There might be something, something better, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be. What are your to, thoughts on this, yeah. on, on this, G? Whoever does Foot Locker's ads is so good. They, I mean, really good. this is just uh, the latest in like a string of greatest hits. The, yes. Uh, the one with Tom Brady uh, for yes. those Week of Greatness ads, the, yes. the Manny Pacquiao The one with uh, Tim Duncan. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. And then uh, in, in, re in related to LeVar Ball news, because I know everything about LeVar Ball, <laughs> he signed a contract yesterday with Topps, I believe, the, the trading card manufacturers, to sell trading cards of his quotes. The man is a genius, okay? He's signing, he's, he's selling autographed trading cards of his quotes. He's made of money. I love LeVar Ball. Please come on Full Size One Show soon. Please, please do. The worst thing, Gerald. Uh, I got the mean job, which is, which is fine. That's usually uh, me, but since, <laughs> since yeah. Brenda's not here today. Um, so obviously yesterday we got the unveil of the We The Best we the best, we the best. I'm not sure how to say We it. the best. <laughs> we the uh, Air Jordan we need 3. The, we need the soundboard. Yeah. We the best. Uh, which, was, which, which was a cool unveil. Went on Khaled's Instagram yesterday. He took the do-rag off of the, the fish tank and showed the collection. But I did have a lot of questions, and, questions. Uh, after. And it was these. What are these other Jordans that are part of this pack? Um, you know, there's the, this looks like the Fly 89. I don't think I've seen this or am familiar with this performance basketball sh shoe uh, that's, that's pictured here. Um, but there, it's obviously taking the same We The Best color scheme that is going to be on this super hyped Air Jordan 3. And, um, you know, I kind of see the strategy where you want to kind of, um, you know, use something that people will be hyped about and hopefully that transfers to your inline product. But it's not um, for you. <laughs> yeah, but it's not for you. I just, uh, I just hope for the sake of, uh, of Cal DJ Khaled and Assad that these don't release uh, <laughs> with these Air Jordan 3s. And if they do, I hope that they don't sit uh, wherever they are. So, shout out to Assad, list. though. <laughs> yeah, we are so grateful Asad. for you. Uh, I'm looking forward to his album, though. Uh, <laughs> A lot more than I am, I guess, looking forward to the Fly 89s. Man, I'm but so jealous of this kid. I just want to live my life like a side cat. Through him, yeah. right? <laughs> through him. That brings us to our guest today. Mm -hmm. The man's name is Chris Arnold. Again, uh, before we invite him on the set, he is the owner of an extremely rare OG Air Jordan prototype, which he's brought uh, with him today. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some MJ stuff. Chris Arnold, come on down, sir, please. Let me move over. And you're, and you're coming straight onto the set with the sneaker playing absolutely no game. <laughs> hey, man. Let me shake your hand first. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome hey, to the show. So before we, before we get into, yes, put the, put the prize <laughs> possession down first. Uh, before we get even into the sneaker, just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Um, well, I, uh, 
I used to work at ProServe, okay. sports marketing firm. And what's ProServe so for the youngins out there? Yeah, it was a, one of the world's largest sports marketing firms. Um, we represented Michael Jordan yeah. for a good amount of time. And this is in 1980? Uh, I started working there, let's say 91, 92. Okay, 91, yeah, 92. Early 90s. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I was, I was working there and right across from my office was this storage closet and uh, where they kept, it was locked. Okay. And only certain people had access to it and it had a lot of gear in it. And, uh, you know, at one point after the basketball division had separated from ProServe, okay. we were no longer representing Jordan and uh, someone was cleaning out the closet and there were two boxes of shoes, but just one shoe in each box, yeah. the, the right shoe. And uh, they were just gonna throw them in the garbage and I saw that they were Jordans. They were just gonna throw them in the garbage? Just throw them in the trash. <laughs> and. Uh, being from My Chicago, <laughs> being from Chicago, I was like, "Oh, I'll take those." Yeah, and this, you know, this was uh, sneaker culture hadn't, you know, hadn't hit the mainstream oh, like it has not. now. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, even as being a huge Jordan fan from Chicago, um, to me, they were a couple of old shoes. Yeah, I was hoping that they. <laughs> that I could wear them, that they were my size yeah. or something. But they were both right shoes, and they were mismatched. One was the Chicago colorway, and then there was a black toe. And uh, once I looked and saw that they were a size 13 and a half, I was like, eh, yeah. they're not going to fit me. So, Which is great. If you are a MJ historian and a sneakerhead, you know that 13 and a half is Michael Jordan's uh, playing size, at least for his right sneaker. I think he wore two different sizes, but I could be wrong. Um, nice so what, well. going back into the story, though, what... Purpose did Pro serve, serve in Michael Jordan's career at the time? Well, they were the guy. They did the you know they did all the marketing. Okay. Uh, Donald Dell was a guy that I had worked with. I was his personal assistant with first. Nike together or? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. No, Donald Dell was the head chairman CEO. Yep. Uh, he's a tennis hall of famer. Yep. Um, I worked for him as his personal assistant the gotcha. first year that I worked there, and uh, he recruited Jordan from North Carolina. Um, he signed with ProServe, yep. and uh, Donald was, you know, instrumental in doing the very first Nike deal yeah. with them and renewing it. You know, however, two or I think it was probably three, three, three or four years later. Years later. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, so I've, you know, I've had this shoe for over twenty years, and that's how they would have gotten this stuff because. Oh yeah, but basically, I think what happened. As I'm kind of speculating a little bit because yeah. I, I don't know, but um, I mean, it, it was just very customary for people to have. Shoes like this just sitting on their shelves in the yeah, office sure. or on display in the conference room mm -hmm. or something like that. So there were two shoes that were used somewhere yep. and the other extra ones were thrown into a closet. And then, like I said, they were just going to throw them out. And where's the Chicago one? Where's the Chicago one? Oh, right you have there? both of them? Yeah, you want to oh, see Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't, can, we, can we get someone to fly let, those? Let me I grab it. just had let the black toes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not as delicate. Hold on. I don't We've know. been instructed yeah. to not touch these and I completely understand. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. so you do have the Chicago one. Yeah. Okay, so tell these, us. Go ahead. Tell us then what we're looking at. Okay, you're looking at um, this is uh, 1985. Yep. Uh, February. Yep. Um, an Air Jordan player sample. Gotcha. Made for Michael Jordan, size 13 and a half. And uh, if you really look at all the details, you'll see that there's there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of differences between this shoe and the shoe that released. I guess you can this swoosh is bigger. Different. Yeah. Um, the cut is lower. Yeah, it's like, it's, I think it has a lower front toe as well. Okay. Um, this is in really damn good shape, though. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, I've not done really, I'm just kind of, this one I don't mind. You can oh, okay, man. take a look. And you can maybe tell me some of the other differences. Yeah. It, it, I, I have to see them next to each other to remember. But On the black, though, there's definitely a lot of subtle differences. That This one I'm very, yeah. okay. very, very familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> So this one has like a super low toe box ah, up front. Yes, yes, I mean, this, yes. this, if you look at the silhouette of the shoe, yeah. it's, um, it's just so sleek and beautiful compared yeah. to any other 85. Yeah. Um, it's got a massive Nike swoosh. Yeah. Um, oh, let me see the swoosh. Oh, yes, it's, a lot, it's, it's more blazer-like than, than these, right? Like Nike yeah. blazer-like. And the, uh, what, what is the technical term for this I little? Stay. I stay. Yeah. I stay for the youngsters out there. <laughs> um, the, in the elbow of the I stay here, there's no lace hole, but in that one oh, there is, and the ones that release it. So it's very interesting. Yeah, um, and then the bottom, you see the Nike uh, in there is a little bit crooked. Crooked. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. other ones perpendicular. The ones I think that came out were perpendicular. Yeah. 
Um, and there's a couple of, like I, I did a YouTube video that shows all the details of just the soles that are different between the shoes. Um, and uh, there's another thing. Oh, one of my favorite things is here, the um, Wings logo. Yeah. This one, if you look at it, it looks like it was hand stamped with a, you know, like they hadn't done a machine process oh, yeah, for I this. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. It's not engraved. It's like Like stamped. that one's yeah. like yeah. really stamped. This one, you can see a little bit of the indentation. Yeah, this is going to be too far away for you, but um, the the, uh, the indentation in that one is really pronounced and it's part of the design of the shoe. Yeah. This is like a, a flat piece of leather that they just wanted to put the color on. Yeah. And you can see a little bit of indentation, but it's not as intentional as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this... The red band up there sort of is is lower on this one. That one it's like pointed higher up. Yeah. But probably just because of the shape of the shoe. Cool. Um, but uh, the, the, and well, you're never gonna see this. But inside the shoe is a uh, a factory sticker that's typed out. That one you haven't seen yet. Wow. No. Yeah. This is this is a crazy piece of Air Jordan history. I mean, the 1985 Air Jordan One is obviously a grail level sneaker to every every Jordan head. But this is this is next level. We saw this week a pair of Michael Jordan's Game One college shoes go for 190K. Um, let us know in the comments how much uh, you think these would go for. Not that we're trying to sell them right now, but <laughs> just trying to appraise and get a value. But like uh, talk about like, you know, your own valuation of them and um if, have you have you gotten offers before for them? um yeah i've gotten some offers before nothing that's um no offers that i think are i would seriously yeah. entertain well, um, well would there be an offer that would spring them for you or is it like sentimental value so high at this point that you couldn't separate yourself from them uh it's a good question i get that a lot um, I think that you know, doing interviews like this for me, it's a way for me to to share my excitement with the shoe. Yeah. And I, even if I just sit here and watch someone else look at and, and tell me what the differences are, or whatever, um, you know, it's it, it's it's a way for me to experience sure. the enjoyment that I get out of it. Yeah. It gets heightened, yeah. and I also get to share it with other people. Yeah. And um, I took it to SneakerCon one year, and people were just like, you know, and they just they wouldn't even get close to it. It was interesting. That was. You know, I would think that everyone would want to touch it, but everyone was like, I just want to get this close and I don't want to, you know, so that was, that was interesting. But and you're also a, a boy from Chicago. Oh, from the Group suburbs of Chicago. Of Chicago. And yeah. an MJ fan. Yeah. So, um, so is there something that will take it off your hands? Um, so like how much do you have to spend basically? <laughs> <laughs> well, they get a pool together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I like to quote, uh, Donald Dell, he has a book called Never Make the First Offer. Gotcha. So I like to yeah. just stick to my mentors. <laughs> I gotcha. Has anyone tried to barter you with it, like barter items for it? Like, hey, like I'll clean your house for 20 years. Yeah, or, Kanye or... wanted to trade me for some shoes, but I... Are you being serious? I, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh. I was about to say, you're about to shut the news. internet. You it's could possible, just you know? <laughs> shut off the internet right now, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I... Uh, I... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Who knows? Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, you know, taking them out of storage and then, and kind of putting them out here has, in in a way, it's sort of given me the satisfaction of owning them. Sure. And the, having the ownership and the excitement of it and all that, and uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. Would you let Michael Jordan sign those shoes? Um, I, I don't. Would I let him sign it if he said if he said I'd like to sign your shoe, Chris? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Obviously, but um, in terms of it, it, the value of it, or in terms of what this piece is, to me, I think that it's more interesting that it's not signed. It's, sure, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I don't. I mean, the bottom of the shoe is looks a little bit different than that in terms of like the colorings. Like maybe it was worn. I don't know. I don't. But I, I don't think that either of the shoes were. No, these are crispy as hell. Yeah, those definitely. I've never seen Air Jordan 85s this crispy, and I've seen yeah. several 85s. Yeah. These are dope. We got a comment from Hero Dang, who's very active today. He said he'll <laughs> trade you a pair of big baller brands for them. <laughs> <So>. Deal. <laughs> Let's make that happen. We're about to broker the worst deal on earth. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had uh, I've had people say they can get it signed by him. I've had I've been in in, in you know in contact with um, Upper Deck about it. Yeah. And I just, you know, I think at the time, if it had been signed back in the day, then I think that would have been really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but to have it signed now. We did a, a Facebook with a gentleman who had Red October Yeezy 2s autographed by Kanye West. Mm -hmm. And at the time of, of around the autographing, he was trying to get $92,000 for this pair of sneakers. Uh, uh, supposedly, according to him, people were offering like Mercedes Benzes and <laughs> stuff like that for, for, for these pair of sneakers. Kanye West uh, autographed Yeezy 2s. What do you think about that when you think about this sneaker? Well, the thing about this shoe is it's the kind of thing where, I mean, I can't say it's one of a kind because there's a, there's a left shoe out there somewhere. But um, That's an interesting story. If you, if you think you have the left shoe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's this, this is the kind of thing where I've done a ton of research yeah. on these shoes. I've been in contact with Peter Moore, the designer. Oh, yeah. Nike Archives wanted to buy the shoe. Did they? Yeah. Um, they didn't want to put out a lot of money down to it. And they even said, they said, a collector is going to give you way more money than the budget that we have. Yeah. Um, but um, this, from what I can tell, this was made, the date on here is November 5th, 84. And so... That's, that's before... He wore them this, in the game. Yeah, that's before, that's before he wore them in the game because he would have wore them 85. November. You know, he wore them in 84. 84, okay. The 17th, I think it was, against the Oh, that was his first Sixers. game. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. I mean, he wore the airship mostly, the yeah. first mm -hmm. beginning or whatever, but um, I think he, the first time he wore a pair of the Chicago colorway was um, November 17th. Or November 18th. 17th. Yeah. That was after the ship. Right, gotcha. Yeah. So, the, you know, I think, and, and you, you've seen the, the black toe in, in the wings yes. photo where it just says Air Jordan on the side. It doesn't have yes. the wings logo. Yes. Um, so I, I am pretty confident knowing uh, how many shoes they gave Michael Jordan at that time that I learned from Peter Moore was that they probably gave him, you know, 10 or 20 shoes around the same time that he started to wear them in the game. So I, am, I feel very confident in saying this shoe is from the very first batch given to Michael Jordan to play in that have the Wings logo. This is the crispiest pair. I've, these, both of these are the crispiest pairs I've ever seen, especially going even further that these are not even OG Air Jordan 1s. These are like pre-OG Air Jordan 1s. You know, like yeah. this is like before he even rocked them, which is mm. just sick to me. Right. And I understand why I can't touch them now. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of history. Well, that, that, one, that one. This one I can touch. That yeah. one has, I think like that's, that might even be a date that the, I think it's February 4th. That might be one of the production dates. Gotcha. I've just, I've seen that date on some, I'm sure a lot of shoes out there. Gotcha. So, um, and, uh, and uh, Nike, they were like, oh, yeah, we've got those. We don't need that one. They were only interested in this shoe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the one that I like, baby, like dope. crazy. <laughs> really dope. So guest lightning questions, we like to do this. Uh, don't think too much. First kind of answer <laughs> that comes to your head. You worked at ProServe, which was a marketing agency that handled a lot of uh, athletes. You are signing an athlete today, LeBron or KD? Uh, I have to pick one. That's right. Now you're thinking too much. <laughs> yeah. KD. KD. I'm, I hate to say this, no disrespect, I'm not a LeBron fan. Okay. Yeah. So how about Kobe? I am not a Kobe fan. <laughs> we'll leave it at KD. <laughs> uh, someone makes you a ridiculous offer on this money, we won't, we'll just say like a you know, million dollars. What's the first thing you buy? With a million dollars? I buy half of a closet in New York City and try to force them to <laughs> Which we call homes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would a, I guess, equivalent trade be for you for these? Equivalent it, trade? Yeah. The left shoe? The left shoe. <laughs> <laughs> then you still have No, no I, like, I like the right shoe is better because it's a 13 and a half. Yes. So, no, I don't, uh, I don't know. But Mercedes? A couple of Mercedes. Yeah, I like them used. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like a G-Wagon and like... <laughs> Come <Okay>. to the way. <laughs> Okay. What was the last pair of sneakers you bought? Last pair that I bought? Yeah. Um, last pair of sneakers that I bought. 
I get a lot for free. Um. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get a lot of guests that say this, and I'm, I'm sitting here wondering why I don't get any for free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Last pair of sneakers that I bought. Oh, pair of Stan Smiths. Okay. Yeah. Can't go wrong yeah. with Stan Smith. Did yeah. Kanye jump, Yeezy jump over the jump man? <laughs> <laughs> Say no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that takes us to our release roundup uh, for the day. A couple of very important releases dropping this week. First and foremost, today, Jordan is dropping the Air Jordan DMP pack, which we have right here. I'm gonna open this up very quickly so you guys can see it. In addition to the DMP pack, uh, that's drops today, 614. Uh, Jordan is dropping, as I alluded to earlier, 616, which is Friday, just on Air Jordan 2s in men's sizes. 616, again on Friday, cool, Adidas is linking up with Palace. 617, the Motorsports Away Air Jordan 7, uh, Air Jordan 4 drops, again, that's 617. Very quickly, just wanted to touch on these since we have a uh, Jordan aficionado in the building. I wanted to break out the newest DMP pack. Yeah, first time seeing these in person. Yeah, so these were inspired by his last championship, which I'm sure Chris knows very well. Last shot and all that. Dropping today, 614. $500 on the retail for the two pack. What do you think? What are your thoughts on this, Chris? Oh, these are pretty tight. I saw this on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, little... the, the captions on them, yeah. 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 They can't win until we quit. Chris, thank you, man, for coming through. Uh, until next time, y'all, I'm Rich Mays Lopez with the janitor in charge, <laughs> Brendan Dunn. Me. Gotta <laughs> go mop up some things. AKA the real <laughs> Gerald Flores in the building. Till next time, y'all. Peace.